you feel you've done all the excursions when it comes to local travel? Well, not quite. Calling all local travelers. It's time to do travel our way. Discover the wonder that lies in the most remote places. Do entertainment with style. Let us reintroduce you to the African artistic flair. Reawaken your palate for fine dining. All of this on Trends Travel every Saturday at 8.30. Former City of Johannesburg mayoral committee member for finance, Jolody Matongo, has been sworn in as the new City of Johannesburg's executive mayor. Matongo says uh, two of his top priorities will be bringing stability to the city's finances and accountability and ensuring adequate service delivery. So I suppose that makes it his three top uh, priorities. His unopposed appointment follows the death of former executive mayor Jeff Makubo, who passed away from COVID-19 complications in July. The new city of Johannesburg's executive mayor, Jolody Matongo, joins us to talk more about his appointment and future plans in restoring the city's service delivery. Um, mayor, good to have you. Thanks for joining us here on Morning Live. Good morning and good morning to the viewers at home. Uh, good to be here. Yeah, congratulations. I mean, this is a, a, a great honor for you, no doubt. How are you feeling as, uh, as you sit there sworn in as the new executive mayor of Johannesburg? Yeah, it's a, it's a very heavy task, a daunting task ahead, but uh, we are up to the task. We will do the best uh, that we can for the citizens of Johannesburg. No doubt. Um, but I want, to, I want to start off on a, a, a bit of a, a, a note where I suppose I'm not going to ignore what's happening on social media. So let's start there and get that straight out of the way. I mean, one of the, the, the top trending topics that has been there and people have been speaking about since you've been sworn in is something called hashtag we reject the mayor of Johannesburg. <laughs> Let, let's talk to that. I mean, how, how does that make you feel firstly? And is there anything you would like to say about this? Well, it's quite unfortunate, but it doesn't give me sleepless nights. Um, I was born in uh, South Africa. If you go and check the records in Paraguanat Hospital, I was born there on the 6th of October, 1974. Uh, I've never been to Zimbabwe, but my father is from Zimbabwe. He was attracted to South Africa, uh, in particular Johannesburg, a city of opportunities, where he met my mother, who is a South African from Boazulu Natal. And that's how I came it, uh, into being. Uh, I'm a South African, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but it's quite unfortunate that people have got to uh, try and put uh, such things on their social media platforms. But we are, we're not deterred, we're not sidetracked. Mm. We're focusing on the task at hand. Yeah. I mean, what does this tell you about, you know, where we are as... You know, as, as I suppose we can't necessarily uh, narrow this down to just, you know, the, the, the city of Johannesburg, because this is, this is something that happens within the country. I mean, the issue of xenophobia is a very, very big one, and the way that we treat foreign nationals in South Africa. Now, not that I'm saying you are, because you have explained your history, but, I mean, talk to me about this and your standpoint on this, because, of course, we know that the city of Johannesburg is a hub where a lot of foreign nationals do come here, immigrants do come to Johannesburg in search of jobs and lives. I mean, where do you stand on this issue? Well, uh, as a member of the ANC, we are very clear as the ANC that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, black and white. But what is quite interesting as well is that if you trace the history of Johannesburg, you would know that uh, Johannesburg is a city that has been built by migrants. Uh, so it's quite unfortunate that people would... Uh, try and uh, you know put out such things out there which is quite distasteful uh, it should be addressed uh, i think uh, we should have as a nation a conversation uh, about uh, ourselves as africans uh, in the first instance africans in africa because uh, some of us believe that uh, we've got also to look at the issue of the borders whether we do need borders in africa whether we should not be uh, col collaborating with all the other countries in africa and maybe eventually even have uh, one currency in Africa. So it's a conversation that we, we, we've got to have. And I think it's, it's quite uh, unfortunate, but 
uh, it's out there now. It must be addressed. All right. Well, let's let's uh, narrow our conversation down before we speak about the continent. Let's at least focus on one city and a city that's not in the greatest shape. Um, you know, Mayor, this is a city that needs a lot of help. It certainly does. You know, when you sort of uh, drive around the city of Johannesburg, there are potholes everywhere. There are traffic lights that don't work. There are street lights that don't work. There are buildings that look like um, some would say a war zone. You know, they're, they're, they're just they're looking terrible. The city is really, really not in the great state at the moment. I mean, where do you begin to fix up the city? The city that, that, that should be a jewel on the continent, not only in the country. Well, the problems you have uh, articulated them very well, the, the portals, and I was thinking to myself uh, yesterday when uh, we were driving back home, uh, I mean, the guys even know that uh, in the next kilometer there is a pothole there. Uh, so if we know that there are potholes, uh, why are we not attending to the portal? I think the issue is uh, we need to make sure that uh, all the uh, people that are responsible for the delivery of services do what they are expected to do. So if uh, we are responsible for Johannesburg Road Agency, JRA knows the problem. The, the calls have been locked to say there's a pothole. Uh, a job card must be issued. People must go out and fix it. If that doesn't happen, it means who are paying people for not doing anything. Therefore, those people who are not doing their job do not deserve to be part of uh, our workforce as a city. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they need to go and sit home. We need to get people that must do the work. So the problems are there. They are known to us. The budgets are there. It's just a matter of getting people to do the work. And I think maybe the, the notion that uh, if you work for government, it's a lifetime uh, employment, uh, nothing will happen to you, uh, needs to be tackled because... Uh, you know, I think the labor unions in the city are very clear. They are on our side that the workers must work uh, and we must all uh, do uh, what we are expected to do. So, so the critical thing for us is to make sure that we are on the ground monitoring on a daily basis that the things that must be done are done. All right. Um, um, Mayor, let me, let, me, let me talk to you a little bit about that. You were in charge of finance before this. You were paying those people that weren't doing their job. So now you take on the role of mayor and you criticize the fact that they were paid for not doing their job. I mean, that, that, it's difficult to believe you when you were the guy paying. So let's talk now. What, what, what's going to be different now that you're mayor and, uh, and not the person paying the finances? Well, uh, people, people have been paid. They have not been doing their work. Uh, Remember, there are various departments and entities. And we've got CEOs and MDs that have got to make sure that the work is done. Uh, so as, as, as a MMC Finance, I'm part of a collective. We sit in a mayoral committee and in council meeting, we hold each other accountable. But what is critical now is that we need to see in the performance scorecards of all the heads of departments, of the CEOs, that the things that we said must be done are in those performance scorecards. In the first three months of the financial year, if those things are not done, then action must be taken. We don't have time. If you are not going to be doing your work, we only have six months. So I don't want mm -hmm. at the end of six months people are saying nothing was done under Matobo. Mm -hmm. That I'm not going to accept. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it would be interesting. Uh, you say that you objected um, to, to paying these service providers and you work a part of a collective. Were there minutes taken? I mean, will we be witness to the minutes taken in these meetings where you opposed not paying some of these service providers that did not actually offer the services so that we can see that you actually did take a standpoint. I mean, you say you were part of a collective, you said you didn't want to pay them, but you had to pay them because you had no option. Can we see that? Is that something that we would be privy to? No, we're not talking about service providers. We're talking about employees of the city who are not doing their work. We sit in a mayoral committee, we sit in council meetings, we interact with the performance reports of the departments and entities and where the performance has been shoddy we have raised the issues i've raised the issues myself uh, in a number of meetings where we dealt with the quarterly reports and i'm sure those uh, quarterly, the, the meetings of the mayoral committee uh, are there for the public to interrogate yeah good well we look forward to seeing those we really do and hopefully those can be something that we can we can look back on i mean you know you talk about non-performance and you know when one saw the announcement of, of 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 those that are going to be leading the city of johannesburg with you as mayor there have been no changes it's the same people that are now taking over from where um the the late mayor was leading they're just two changes obviously uh, the one that uh, you used to hold in another position but generally it's the same faces so 
what really is going to change? I mean, it, 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 it's hard to think that anything is going to be different. Well, uh, if you are, you are to judge us, you must judge us on the basis of the performance. Uh, the annual report of the city is out there in terms of performance. Uh, the performance of the city has improved uh, slightly from what we had, including the performance in relation to the finances. Uh, it has improved, so we can make those available. I think the point you are making is that uh, to, are we confident that the same team that was there will do the work? And the answer is yes, because we don't want uh, a lot of changes because you bring in people in a period of six months, they still have to learn. In the process of learning, then nothing happens. So that is a very dangerous thing to do. Yeah. Uh, the members of the mayoral committee are there. They know what is expected. They will sign performance scorecards with the mayor and the work must be done. You know, one, one also has a look. I mean, we, we, we talk about you, you, you came in very, very strongly and made a, you know, a, a comment saying if, if those members within those that are in your committee do not um, perform, you will take very tough action on them and you, you stand very strongly against corruption. However, I mean, we take a look at one of your appointments and that is the name Luiso Masuku that jumps up at us. Now, uh, retained in the position of uh, Corporate Shared Services MMC, despite being implicated alongside her husband, Bandile Masuku, who we know very, very well. It's been a, a, a huge case alongside um, Kusela Diko uh, with alleged PPE corruption in the Gauteng Health Department. Why retain? Why, why keep this position and this person a part of your uh, cabinet where, you know, you could actually just start on a clean state? Uh, don't, don't bring corruption into it. Well, we are not bringing corruption into it. Uh, what has happened is that uh, MMC Masuku, when the allegations uh, surfaced, uh, approached the executive mayor, then uh, the late Makubo, to request a, a special leave so that the matters can be dealt with. She subjected herself uh, to the integrity committee of the ANC. The SIU also uh, made an investigation. The integrity committee of the ANC cleared her. The SIU has not found anything uh, or any wrongdoing on her part. So we can't punish her uh, on the basis that there was a cloud uh, hanging around her head. If there's something that comes out in the next few days or few weeks or few months that suggests that she was involved in corruption, I think it is obvious that she will have to step aside as per the guidelines of the ANC fight. But for now, she's innocent. Nothing has been proven that she's involved in corruption. Yeah. I mean, it's very much so the same, the same position that the ANC takes in general. It's a policy within the ANC in terms of, you know, putting people into these positions. However, you know, you mentioned something a little bit earlier about having a look at your, your, your finances and the books and, you know, those kind of things. But, you know, the, I suppose the point of the matter is it's the lived experiences of those that live here in the city that I think can tell you more than what's written on a piece of paper. It's, it's the idea that rates, that taxes, that, you know, we constantly see things getting higher and higher and higher in terms of what you're paying. But in terms of what you're getting back, it seems to be less and less and less because the service delivery is where one of the biggest problems is with the city of Johannesburg. You know, it, it's just one of those issues that just never, ever seems to be rectified. It just seems to be getting worse and worse. Where do you begin? I mean, let, let's talk about it. First day in office, where do you say, right, we're going in and we're fixing this up? Well, our approach is that uh, we've got to look at each and every ward, 135 wards of the city. Uh, we, we need a report that says, tell us in what one in Orange Farm, what are the service delivery challenges? If you say there are potholes, the report must be sent to JRA to fix the potholes. So from the next coming week, we should be able to, at any given point, do spot checks across the city. Because the problems are there, they have been documented, people have complained, the street lights are not working. The department responsible must respond. And I think we are going to be dealing with the mindset issue. I can give you a typical example. I came home the other day, very late at night. The guys in my area were patrolling the area. I went to uh, offer my support to them. They said to me, we know you work very hard, you can go home. But the only thing you can help us with is the street lights in the area, they are not working. I picked up a phone, I phoned City Power. Within 72 hours, the street lights were fixed. Now, when you ask, why have that not been fixed for a long time? The councillor has locked a call. 
but they don't take the councillor serious. So those are the things we must deal with. Mm -hmm. it, it shouldn't be the mayor or the MMC that calls and the issues are, are attended to. The citizen phones, there's a reference. That thing must be attended to. So we are going to be zooming on on the depot managers and everybody who gets a query that is locked on service delivery failures but doesn't respond. So yeah. that's our approach. All right. Well, Mayor, I'm going to give you a challenge. There's a pothole outside the SABC. It's been sitting there for two years now. It's one of the biggest potholes I've ever seen. And it's been literally sitting there for two years solid years and nothing's ever happened. All I know is that there's red tape around it and if anybody drives into it or cycles into it, that's it. It's over. Their car is finished and they are finished in their, their cycle. Can I challenge you? It's on Artillery Road outside here. Will you phone that person that you know that can come and fix it? I will certainly do that, uh, Mr. Republic. Uh, uh, the, the CEO of GRA, Munakedi, is going to attend to it. From your call now, I'm going to call him and I'll be there in the afternoon to see if it has been attended to. Well, that's great. But you see, that's what upsets us is that I have to get you onto live television. I imagine if that had to happen for everybody because, Mayor, this is the lived reality of every single citizen here in South Africa is that they have to look at these things on a daily basis. Is, is a, a, a light lying on their streets that wires, open live wires are there, traffic lights don't work, accidents taking place and crime. We haven't even touched on crime. What are you going to do about the rampant crime here in Johannesburg? Well, we have recruited a number of JMPD officers. We will continue with the recruitment of more officers. We are putting on the road in each and every ward 10 officers per ward to make sure that they help us. But we're also going to be using a lot of technology to help us deal with crime. We're going to be deploying uh, CCTV cameras across the city. We already have a, a center in, a, in Martindale where we've got our officers sitting looking at the screens which are fed uh, from the CCTV cameras so that we can have an aerial view of the city. Any incident of crime happening on the ground, those sitting in the center should be able to contact the officers on the ground nearest to where the incident is happening. But it's a collective effort. We also need communities to help us in the fight against crime because one of the critical things is that uh, those who are involved in crime are our friends, they are our family members. So we should be the ones also helping the police to identify such people. All right, Mayor, I have, to, I, I have to leave it there, and I don't want to, but this is the first of many conversations I hope that we have um, because there is so much more that we need to talk about. Um, accusation, let me quickly ask you this one. There's been an accusation that you basically have always been the former mayor's right-hand man, and all you've just basically been doing is defending some of the wrong that he was involved in. Is that true? No, I've never defended any wrongdoing by anybody. Uh, I've worked with the former mayor as his uh, strategic advisor when he was the MMC for finance. Uh, from there I left, I became chief of staff in the province, then I came back to be a councillor. Uh, me and Comrade Jeff have been uh, in the youth structures of the aid, so we come a long way. We are comrades in arms, we are friends, but uh, there's no uh, defending each other in terms of wrongdoing and corruption. All right, we'll leave it there. That was the, uh, the new city of Johannesburg executive mayor, Jolody Matongo, talking to us about his appointment and future plans. Thanks very much, Mayor. Look forward to chatting again. And look forward to seeing... The